everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing and painting tutorial of Firelock Games Blood and Crowns. So I don't actually have the official rule sets yet, as of yet, on the cards uh, that was part of the Kickstarter. I believe that's going to be delivered in January. This is more focused on the miniatures portion of it. So Firelock Games was partnering up with Perry Miniatures, similar to the uh, Blood and Steel game and, uh, and uh, Blood and Valor, where they made the rule set, um, but then partnered up with another miniatures company to uh, release some miniatures. Now, of course, you can use all sorts of different miniatures, and that's the beauty of these kind of games. They, Firelock Games makes the rule set, um, and then you can pretty well use any miniatures you want that follow along the units that you're able to build in the game. So, so But they uh, conveniently added these Perry miniatures to their website. I don't know if they still have them up there. I think they do. Um, but uh, if you go there and check that out, uh, that's kind of where I got my miniatures from. I just ordered them through Firelock Games and got the uh, four different types that they had uh, Perry miniatures for this game. So pretty well those four boxes can pretty well build any armies or whatever you need to do for Blood and Crowns. Now, maybe we'll just talk a little bit about Blood and Crowns. Uh, I'm not a super expert on this time period. Uh, I find it very interesting. Uh, it's more... Uh, it's during the Hundred Years War, I believe. That's, you know, kind of what I've been getting. Uh, a really good YouTube channel uh, is the uh, Medieval War Gamer. Uh, it does a really good, ex you know, job explaining this. He has uh, lots of videos out for this time period. And uh, he does uh, some tutorials on Blood and Crowns. Uh, and they're really easy to follow. I do recommend you checking out that channel. I'll put a link to his channel below. Uh, and if you want some more in-depth uh, historical views on it, um, like I said, I'm no, no expert, uh, but definitely he's got a lot of information on the, his channel there. And that's, uh, that's, that's a great channel to check out. Uh, also I'll put a link to Firelock Games. Um, and there's some videos, uh, talking to Mike Tunas and Eric Hansen, who's the creator of, uh, Blood and Crowns. There's some links on, uh, that, uh, page as well, uh, to get more information on this game and how it's played and, and all those kind of things. So I, I haven't quite built all my miniatures and haven't played it out yet. So, uh, and like I said, I don't even have a copy of the rule set yet, so uh, I do. I did uh, buy into the Kickstarter, and that's coming, and we'll do a separate unboxing for when that's arriving. And like I said, I, I believe it's in January sometime. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll do that when that comes. So, but in this video, we're going to focus on those uh, Perry miniatures and an unboxing of those. We'll open them up, look inside, and in, uh, in depth. Um, you know, Perry miniatures has these cool little things for flags and different paint schemes and stuff like that to help you out and build and paint your miniatures, which I think are really cool. Um, so I got some finished painting ones. Maybe we'll just quickly take a look at that. I'll just briefly go through these. Um, there's a lot of just the infantry and men-at-arms. I got some mounted knights. Pretty well everything they offered on the Firelock Games page. Uh, uh, British, definitely this is probably the, you know, faction I'm going to be using. Um, and uh, we got uh, some some more knights and uh, more, uh, you know, French infantry and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of an interesting time because it's more, I think, like feudal Japan, really. There's a lot of, like, fiefdoms and stuff, little small lords that own different uh, sections of land, and sometimes they would fight for the king, and, and it's kind of an interesting time period. I know the Blood and Crowns kind of simplifies it a little bit, so, it, you know, you got the uh, French and English and Spanish and... Uh, I think you can even play some kind of pirates too, which is really interesting. So I think I got enough miniatures there. I could probably build two or three, definitely two armies, but maybe even a third army. So I'll have to take a look at that. And once I get that rule set, it'll be a little easier to, you know, flush that out a little bit more. Uh, and then the, the painting tutorial portion. Here's some uh, French crossbowmen uh, that I painted up. Uh, I probably can't even see them, but... Uh, Anyways, we're, we're going to go down the table and check them out anyways, and you'll see me paint these up. That guy there, and then we got, I uh, did a couple of uh, English uh, bowmen. Uh, you know, I started off with the bowmen and crossmen, but, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I would like to do a future episode with knights and stuff like that and other stuff. Um, but in this episode, we're just going to stick to those four miniatures, and uh, i show you how I, I base them. I spend a little more time in showing you how I put that drywall compound on them, and uh, how I prepped the bottom of these uh, miniatures. I ended up using um, the smaller Firelock Games um, bases, mainly because there's a, sh a C component and amphibious components to this. Well, there's not actually amphibious rules, but 
you you could easily play with what is available in this game. It should be able to play exactly the same, similar to Blood and Plunder. Uh, but there is definitely a ship component to it, which, so I figured if I have the smaller bases, and that's kind of the concept of uh, Blood and Plunder, so I have the smaller bases, so you can fit more miniatures onto the boat. Um, so that's kind of uh, my theory behind it. I decided to go with the smaller bases so I could fit more miniatures onto the ships. Now, we'll see the ships. I know that they're going to release some kind of uh, 3D printed version of it, of one of the boats. Uh, and I might even just, uh, you know, craft a whole ship on on the uh, channel, you know, on this channel and just build one right from scratch uh, and see what kind of uh, ship I can build. Uh, there, Those ships are kind of really different back then. Usually they have one or two big sails and oh, they're kind of boxy. They look like they have castle uh, towers on them. It's kind of an interesting time period. Um, so I really want to do the ship component of it because it seems really cool. And that's kind of why I went with a smaller uh, basis. Anyways, we'll talk more about that when we get down to the table. So if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den. And get first-hand inf first information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's start painting and let's start unboxing. And happy Halloween, everyone. I forgot this episode will be released on Halloween. I forgot. I got all these things going on in the background. Um, but uh, it is uh, Halloween. Uh, everybody have a safe holiday. And if you don't celebrate it, okay. <laughs> nope, no problem. Uh, just, just ignore that part. All right, let's get down to the table. Okay, so let's get this box open. Now you can see I've sped up the camera just a tad, just to I'll save some time on this video, and uh, let's get into that box faster. <laughs> uh, but I'm really excited to get into these uh, Blood and Crown miniatures and, and uh, get start uh, working on these and uh, get closer. Uh, you know, i got some time. If it's not coming until January, i got some time to uh, build some terrain and get these miniatures completed. So this is what I got in the box. Like I said, I got one of each type. Um, it's like it's French infantry. It's got some crossbowmen, uh, men at arms. Um, you see on the picture, these are the kind of units you can build. So I like uh, about these pair miniatures. They have a lot of uh, you know good pictures for you to figure out how to build things and and paint schemes and stuff. So of course this is the English army. This has a lot of uh, archers and uh, and also men at arms and knights. Foot, uh, I would say footmen more than, and there's no mountain knights in here, but I got a separate box for that. So these, I, I imagine I'll probably do some French and English with them, you know, multi-purpose. I think there's only a dozen in here, but, uh, you know, I can make uh, six for each uh, army. And then that'll be, uh, that'll be great, different types. And then uh, I got one more is, uh, I think this is generic, uh, like uh, foot knights, it says. Uh, you can use this for English or the French. Uh, and then I was kind of uh, talking about maybe that pirate faction, you know, looking to more into that. I think I might build that more <laughs> when I get the instructions because I don't really uh, know exactly what that entails and who's, you know, who's in that force. Uh, and I got some more character cards. You can never have too much of that in some rigging. All right, so let's crack into this first box here. These are the uh, the knights. It's kind of the last one I took out of the uh, box. And this is what I mean. They, uh, similar to the uh, Zulus and the uh, English uh, infantry I had, look at all the different flags. You can cut these out and glue them onto the miniatures, which is really cool. Now, there's so many different lords in here and their flags, and I know, I'm going to have to do some research, here, research on this, but I'm not really, I don't know, I, I call it a button counter. I'm not really big on... Uh, uh, really looking into do too much of uh, having it 100% historically correct. You know, I'll, I'll try my best to make it as accurate as I can, but it's really not as important. So you get quite a few sprues in here. Um, you know, you get, uh, these, these ones are all just foot knights, so there's different types of ones with uh, spears and and all sorts of different weapons, hand weapons in here, maces and axes and swords. and So you can really customize what kind of weapons you want on them. So these are the mounted knights. Uh, you get a dozen in here. Of course, they're a little bigger, so you don't get as many in the box. Uh, so most of the other ones are 30-plus uh, miniatures inside. Um, but you got to your uh, horse, looks like torsos on one sprue. These are the bases I was talking about, some bigger bases. Uh, I'm going to use the Firelock games, but not for the cavalry. I'll probably have to use those bigger ones there. 
I'm just showing you these, these are the, uh, looks like you get uh, three horses per sprue. And you get some different riders and some different options for weapons uh, on here. All sorts of different things. It looks like they got different kinds of saddles and stuff. Uh, some bows, maybe you can make some mounted archers. Uh, and uh, here's some of the flag options you have. They give you different uh, ideas of how to build them, which is really cool. Like, I love these little sheets that they have in the Perry Miniatures. They're really awesome. And then you got a whole bunch of flags to pick from, some color schemes. Really great. Uh, gives you a good head start. Especially for somebody like me that's not, you know, too familiar with what people look like back then. So, you know, like I said, I, I just want it to be approximately what it should look like. Uh, again, I'm not going to be 100% accurate. So you can see there's lots of archers in here. This is the English box. Uh, so lots of bowmen in here. They even got like little spikes. So you can make a little terrain piece in here. I think I'm going to build a terrain piece out of this sprue. Uh, make a little spiked wall. Uh, they did a lot of, uh, had their archer, archers usually protected with a, some kind of spike barrier. Even though we've built those on the channel, uh, I like to build a few of these ones with the, the Perry miniature pieces. So you got a few uh, mounted, uh, like a, I would say men-at-arms options here. So you get a couple sprues of that, and the rest of the sprues are all archers. So you got two different types in there. Uh, in here there's a bunch of different flags, different options for painting them. Um as you can see, really big uh, flags, probably for, well, they have it for uh, uh, spearmen or, or maybe even can add it to my mounted uh, horsemen there too. And then last up, we got our French infantry. This has our crossbowmen in it uh, and it looks like some more mounted arms for the French army. Um, but I think these are a lot of uh, interchangeable in here. It looks like we got some bigger shields in here, all sorts of different uh, helmet options, head options swords axes crossbows uh looks like they got little quivers for their uh, belts and they got little mini shields too which i thought was really cool uh some of the archers carry little shields i suppose if they ran out of arrows or they're close combat and they have a shield and a sword um and then of course you get a couple sprues of man at arms so it looks like you get like two th in both of these the english box and this one you get two sprues of man at arms and then the rest of it's uh crossbowmen and the other one is uh, archers and two sprues of men at arms but with the addition of the uh knights and the mounted knights i think i pretty well flush out the entire force so this one has a really good look at all the different colored uniforms i really like these colored pictures all right, so these are the Firelock Games bases I was talking about. We're just going to make uh, two English uh, and two of the French in here. I just uh, Similar to the one I did for Blood and Steel, I just did two of each type, two Zulus, two English. Uh, I figured I'd start with some archers and some crossbowmen. And I kind of looked at a couple of the poses that are in the pictures here. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to get creative as we go along with uh, building more of these. But uh, for now, for this video, I'm just going to stick to kind of some of the uh, the generic poses that are in here. So this is the kind of glue I use, tester's glue. I like that. It's uh, non-toxic. It smells like lemons. Little sandpapers, my little clippers with a flat end on it, and my hobby knife. So these are the things I use to cut everything off the sprues uh, and try not to damage anything because there's a lot of skinny bows and swords and all sorts of crazy stuff. All right, so this is after I've glued it together. This is pretty much similar to a pose that's already on the sheet there. And same with this one. These are our two English archers. I've got them all glued together. And I've glued them to those Firelock game bases, as you can see. Again, I decided to go that way uh, to fit on uh, the ships better. So then I decided to do the crossbow men. I kind of like this guy. Uh, he's kind of winding up his uh, crossbow and getting his quiver ready. And this guy's loaded and ready to ready to shoot. So I got two different uh, poses here. Uh, I thought they would be a good good start to to work on for our painting tutorial. But before we can paint, we got to do our basing. So once I've glued them all together, I usually immediately go to basing. So that's just spackle. It's a drywall compound by DAP. I get it from Home Depot. Um, this is a pretty popular brand. You can get it in most hardware stores. I don't know in Europe, but I'm pretty sure they have something uh, equivalent to this. Uh, it, it usually goes on pink, and then it dries white. So I know I'm kind of going off the screen here, but uh, really what I just do is I just put a couple blobs in all the corners, and then I just kind of work it out. And if I have excess, I just scoop it off, stick it back in the uh, bucket there. Um, and really a way to smooth it out, just add a little water to the end of this. That's a little 
hobby or putty thing I got there is, is really just from the dollar store. I got it from an art set. I think it's from a mixing paint on a palette or something. But it comes in handy for doing these little miniatures. <clears throat> so I just kind of keep working it, keep working it. Of course, I sped this up a little bit to save you guys from me <laughs> watching me put all the drywall compound on here. But I just wanted to show you uh, complete. I usually pass over this and don't show you how really I do it. It's a little messy, uh, but it, it uh, really gives you a good effect. So these are after they're all done. You can't even see the base. They're all like a solid piece now. Um, so I wanted to show you uh, them all covered like this. So these are wet, they're pink. Now they are dry. You can see it just, now you know when they're dry. I left it for 24 hours. So I usually let it dry really, uh, really good before I start mucking around with it. And uh, the good thing is you just use a little bit of sandpaper. You can clean it up a little bit if you got too much on the legs if you want. I like to sometimes have it as mud or something that's on their boots. Uh, but you can just clean these up or around the bases. And then I seal it in with my uh, full cart multi-surface black craft paint. Same as I do with my terrain. Uh, and I'm going to use that brush-on primer. I use brush-on primer. Like I said, I, I want you to be able to do this on the kitchen table. Not something you have to go to the garage or go outside and spray paint and whatever. It's just... That's just a personal preference. You can do that totally, um, but I prefer to do it this way. And I get to feel that there's good results here. So this is after the crap paint's dry and the brush-on primer's done. And these guys are ready to roll, ready to start doing some painting. I'm going to continue painting the base. I like to finish adding my usual terrain color, so real brown by full cart. Uh, and this just adds more layers of craft paint to the bottom, which makes it strong and uh, adds strength to it. And it gives you a really good look on the bottom. It gives you a really good mud look on the bottom of your bases. So we're going to kind of take a little bit of time. I'm going to show you how I paint them. Usually this is something else I would pass over, but I'm going to spend some time uh, painting it on the, on the channel today. Just so you can see how I apply the paint. It's just a small flat brush I'm using. And uh, I just kind of put a little bit on there. Not too crazy, because I want to keep some of the black um, sticking out. And, and we're going to add a couple more colors to the top of that. Uh, you probably know which ones they are if you watch this channel a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it really uh, adds a lot to the base. you got a good, really good muddy feel to it. And it's when we do the basing at the very end, it really adds a lot to it. So I'm just showing you uh, all the real brown is dried up and it's completed. Actually, once you put this on, you can rapidly go through these colors. It dries pretty quickly on there, uh, so you can continue on. So that's uh, Bark Brown's the next color uh, that I use. It's a, so it's a lighter brown. Uh, and like I said, if you've uh, been watching my channel for a while, you're familiar with these uh, undertones that I use. And they really give a nice looking mud look to the bottom of your base of your miniature. So I love basing my miniatures this way, and uh, you know I, I pretty well do all of them this way, except for some of the Firelock Games ones uh, for my sailors and stuff. I just leave the wooden planks on there. I don't bother adding basing on it. But uh, if you're adding another miniature to another base and you're adding the drywall compound, it's good to add all these colors to it. So then uh, we move to Pablo. It's a bright kind of an orange color, and that just really kind of adds more to the base, gives a little brightness to it. Um, but also enhances that mud look to the base of your miniature. So we're kind of just sticking to that one archer for now. Just, uh, you know, it's no point showing you each one is applied the same way in all the miniatures. Uh, but I just figured we'd spend time on one of them just to show you how I add the paint. And really, I didn't uh, wait for it to dry in between. I just kind of went one color to the next color to the next color. Uh, there's not a whole lot of paint on that brush. Just a little bit. I like to I like to work it in. Uh, it looks better that way. Uh, if you're probably wondering what that canoe is in the background, I just figured since I was using my priming colors, I had a canoe that I hadn't primed yet, so I just figured I'd prime it at the same time. So uh, it's not not for these guys. <laughs> uh, I just figured I'd do it at the same time while I'm painting. I do a lot of things like that where I just have multiple projects going. So that's Barbarian Flesh by Army Painter and the Flesh Wash. That's my favorite two combo for flesh color. Uh, for like Europeans and stuff like this, uh, that was that would be the colors I would use. Um, it gives a good good look. You don't really need to add anything else. Uh, sometimes I go back with a tanned flesh afterwards if I you know if I want to clean up something or add a little more highlights in there. Uh, but other than that, uh, I pretty well leave it the way it is. It it gives a really good look. Those two colors together, you don't really have to add a lot. 
So I'm just showing you what I do. So, uh, this guy happens to have bare hands. Um, the other guy seems to have a glove on it. I know a lot of archers have a kind of some kind of protective leather thing on their hands. Um, but this guy seemed to have bare hands. So anyway, so I just figured I'd paint his hands up and his face. Now, the good thing about these knights is that there's not a lot of flesh sticking out. <laughs> they mostly have armor. So, you know, and it's fairly easy to do the flesh color in there. Um, then we got some uh, black on here. So I like to, on the undertone of the metallics, I like to add black on there. Now, now I don't want to add black craft paint. I'm going to add the flat black army painter paint, so miniature paints, um, uh, opposed to the black paint. The black paint is good for sealing the craft paint for the base, uh, but not for painting the actual details on the miniature. I want to keep some of these details really clear on here. So I'm going to go back to miniature paint. So this is just a flat black. And anything that's I feel that's metallic that I want, I'm going to do a dry brush of the metallic over top of it. And it really gives it a good grungy metal look. I use the same kind of technique when I paint my cannons on my ships. Uh, and I want to carry that over into these uh, these miniatures. I may look at some of the knights when we get to some of those uh, bigger armored uh, guys. that I might have a little bit of more shiny pieces to them. Uh, but for as far as these archers and uh, crossbowmen, I'm going to go with a dirty metal look. So that's uh, Dragon Red, uh, and it's uh, it's kind of a nice, deep, darker red color, and I usually use it as a base for a lot of things. So you, st you can see a trend here. I start with darker colors, and then I work my way out to the lighter colors. So I'm just showing you, uh, I used that, uh, you know, the sh samples here and looked at uh, some of the uh, color schemes that are on the Perry miniature sheets that are in these boxes, and I'm going to kind of match some of those color uh, schemes that I really like there. So I'm going to add some red to these guys. So this is that Dragon Red from Army Painter, and really I started with that specifically because it, most of these miniatures is, you know, a good chunk of the miniatures can be painted this color, so I decided to whatever I have the, you know, the most color I got to put on, I usually start with that color first. Uh, before I start moving on to uh, smaller colors. So I'm going to, because, you know, if you make a little bit of air, you can cover it up with the other ones as you go from layers on top of each other. And we were going to come back later after we add washes to add a brighter red to this. But we're going to start off with this, this darker red. So I'm going to show a little bit of this. Now there's going to be some colors I'm going to spend more time on. And some of them I'm not going to spend as much time on. Um, I think you get the gist of it. I'll just show you what it looks like when I'm done painting it. So these are kind of the things, that, when you're doing like a batch paint like this, I would probably do more than this, but just for this video's purposes, I'm only doing the four. Um, I'm using red, and then I looked at all my miniatures that are here, here, and I painted everything that I think should be red on all four of them. So this is a speed paint, Grim Black, and I want to do some of the boots with that color. I'm going to do uh, one of the archer's uniform, half black. Uh, and then skeleton bone is going to be used for adding to some of the other tunics and, and arm pieces of uh, some of the French infantry, or French crossbowmen, sorry. Uh, and then that's a uh, desert yellow as well. I'm going to add on there and some of the pieces too, maybe on the actual bows themselves. So this is a speed paint. Be tricky with this stuff. Uh, if you have too much on your brush, it'll just bleed right into the next color next to you. So <laughs> be careful not to puddle too much on there. Uh, because it, uh, it is, you know, I'm doing a kind of precision work with speed paint, probably not the best thing, but I really like the, this color, uh, when it dries, it's got a nice uh, look to it. Uh, it's pretty solid black and it's easy to apply. Um, as long as you don't blob too much on it. So we're just going to show a little bit of this, me applying this. Of course, you can see that I've sped the camera up a, a tad. Uh, I don't usually paint this fast, <laughs> a little bit slower, but to save time on this video, I didn't want to have a, you know, an hour long video of me painting miniatures. So I sped it up a little bit. Um, and <clears throat> I'm really kind of just sticking to a couple of miniatures just to give you guys kind of an idea. And maybe when I switch with colors, just to show you how I apply the paint, uh, kind of going off the screen here again. Uh, sometimes I forget. All right. So this is kind of after I added the black. You can see I've added that skeleton uh, a bone. And we got uh, some black, the red, just all the colors on here, really the big bulky colors that are on this miniature. So then I moved to some lighter color uh, speed paints, a uh, sand golem. Um, and uh, I just really kind of added it to some of the bows, uh, some of the, you know, the bottom uh, leg leggings. And then I use a, 
I might use more of a wood colors, a uh, dark wood and hardened leather, uh, speed paints for the belts and uh, some of the parts of the bow and uh, the crossbow, the wooden stock of it. And I use plate metal um, is the uh, metallic that I'm going to use. So I'm going to start with that, the plate mill metallic. So I kind of did this one already just to show you. I've completed it, the leggings on here. Actually, I actually did three of them and we're going to do one here. I'm going to show you how I do that. So this is our last uh, English archer here. And really, I just got a, it's a smaller flat brush that I like to use. Um, and really, I just put very little paint on it, try to brush out a lot of it. Uh, and then I just, same thing I would do when I do dry brush. And you just kind of, you know, hits the raised areas and you still got some of that nice black underneath. And it really gives it kind of an aged metal look. Uh, and I was actually surprised at these Perry miniatures when I started painting uh, like these shields and stuff on the back. There is a little bit of texture to them. Uh, and I wouldn't have seen it uh, unless I actually painted it with this uh, steel. Uh, and it really gives it a, an authentic uh, metal look to it. Like it was just, you know, banged out like uh, from a blacksmith, which, you know, probably happened at this time period. Um, so I really like the look of that. Uh, so I was really happy how that uh, turned out. But I've been doing that from now on, just painting black and then metallics on top. So this is kind of a, it's kind of like a copper color. I was going to use some of the for the face masks and some greedy gold. <clears throat> just some more metallic details on here on the belts um, and around the face plates. And just to add a little more metallic bits to it. And I really just want to add all these different colors in first. Um, before I start adding the washes and the uh, contrast paints on top. I really just uh, like to get all the colors chalked in first, so they're pretty bright right now. Um, then I use this a little bit of skeleton hoard, but mostly Agrax Earth Shader, uh, and I'm going to pretty well cover most of the miniature. Uh, the red definitely and the lighter colors on here. Um, some of the bows and stuff because of all those uh, speed paints I've used, I've actually kind of liked the colors the way they are, so I'm not going to add too much on there. Uh, just a tad to the metallics to even dirty it up a little bit more. Maybe if it's a little too shiny in certain areas, I'll add a little bit of that paint on there. But I'm just showing you, I didn't, didn't uh, you know, add it on live here. I just explained to you what I did. So this is afterwards. Uh, you can see everything's got kind of a dingy, dark color. Uh, which is great. That's kind of my base I want to start from. So now I've got all my colors on, uh, and really now I want to start highlighting things. So I got this pure red. I'm going to go back to the skeleton bone, desert yellow. And I'm going to add some mummy robe and uh, the really light blue there, lava orange for kind of the weathering of leather. So we're going to add these colors in to really brighten up the miniature now. And you'll have all those nice undertones underneath. So this allowed me, uh, I was using that um, skeleton bone, you can see I kind of had, like, they're, they're kind of their tunics or their uniforms there have a little bit of a, looks like they're little plates uh, sewn together. Um, not uh, not like chain mill, but a little bit uh, like material or leather pieces. So I kind of wanted to capture that with that color. Uh, and you can see there's scarves on the other guys as well. Uh, and then I started adding that pure red, um, which really adds a lot of, really a lot of color to it so you got that nice dark deep red underneath and then you're highlighting it now it looks really bright because i just painted it uh it'll dry a little bit darker so it won't be as bright when it's uh, all dry but it's good i just wanted to show you as i was painting what it looks like and it's it's dry enough for me to touch it it's not like it's not super dry but it'll get a little bit darker uh, and i like that uh you got it fades into the dark red and you got a little bit of light red on there too so then the uh, lava orange, uh, really I just uh, get same, it's kind of the same as the metallics. I just really, and I just use my finger, I just kind of get out some of the orange on there. Uh, and you can see where this uh, sword is sheathed in here, uh, that leather casing. That's the kind of things I would go with this uh, orange on. And you, you just kind of rub it on uh, and it gives it a, like a worn leather look like it's worn out leather i'll hit their belts and uh, some other areas uh, like they, they have a pouch with their quivers in it i hit that as well and same thing same technique uh, sometimes you'll add too much orange and you might have to wipe it off but uh, you know just keep working it just keep working it in uh, and again don't panic too much if it's too bright when you put it on uh, again as the other colors it'll dry darker 
Um, but when it dries, it gives you a nice, like, like a weathered look to your leather. And uh, I really like this, just using a bright orange for that. So this is after the miniatures are pretty well done. I'm just going to take a look at it, what they look like. See, so you got a little weathering on our leather there. All our bright colors have been added in. I didn't really show the blue, but I added a bright blue onto that guy's uh, uh, uniform there and just on his arms there. So it really stands out nice. Uh, and I added some details on their chest. Like I had the English have red crosses and the French have white crosses. What, what I've noticed from the examples that Perry Miniatures had, I kind of just followed their color scheme. I really like the black uh, with the red cross on it. I really like that. I'm probably going to make a couple guys with that black look. Uh, I really like that that color uh, scheme. So now I'm going to move to uh, adding the bases. So these are the huge miniatures, the static grass, uh, like moss color. It's really nice, and I like their multi-shaped tufts. We got uh, kind of like a like a plains look to it, and we got this other darker green one, and then some of these larger tufts just to put a little variety on there. I don't have a lot of room on these bases because I went with a smaller base, but well, there's enough room to add some of those tufts in there. So I'm hoping the uh, next video we'll get to get to back to some terrain building. I'd love to build some terrain for this game. So definitely that's going to be some uh, episodes in the future. Um, and uh, looking at uh, maybe I'll do the, uh, the the mounted knights in a separate episode as well. Uh, you know, it'll be a series of videos on uh, the blood and crowns. This is really just the beginning. Uh, there'll be an unboxing of the actual game uh, instructions and all that stuff at a later date. All right, uh, thanks so much for stopping in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you.